So that's basically what my dad was teaching me. He used, he'd whisper in my ear, we'd be digging a hole, we'd be digging a, a, a footing or a foundation or a swimming pool or whatever we were digging. And he'd look over at the other men who were uh, 30, 20, 30 years old. I was 10, 11, 12 years old. He's like, look at those men over there. Look at them. Look at them. Four or five guys. Look at those guys. Look at look at them. They're, they're, they're sitting down. Oh, they're tired. Oh, look, look. They're getting a drink of beer. Oh, now they're getting a sandwich. Look, we've been doing this since uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. We haven't stopped and gotten a sandwich. Remember, lady asked us, do you want to eat? No, we, we, we keep working. The only thing we accept is water. That we could accept from our fellow man. Anything else, we're going to owe them a debt. We don't owe a debt to anybody. When we're done doing this foundation, she's going to owe us. We don't owe her anything. We... Uh, we are in control of our, we uh, we do as, you know, we don't have to uh, succumb to uh, fatigue, the hunger. We don't, we don't submit to anything. We'll work through the hunger. We'll work through the pain. We'll work through the heat. We'll work through the cold. We don't submit to anything. We do it because we wish to do it. We do it because we will to do it. We will do it because we, 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 we require it of ourselves. We are going to do this because this is who we are. And nobody's going to get in our way. Hunger, tired, fatigue, pain, cold, heat, nothing's going to get in our way. Nothing is going to stop us. We are going to do this or we're going to die. We have no other choice. We will do this. So he always was whispering right here. The other guys, the other men, I mean, I was like the only like child, you could say, 10, 11, 12-year-old child that working next to men. But it was great. Like I said, it, this is what I'm trying to teach you guys. You have no other choice. These people that are coming after you are lepers. They're, they're not, not, not lepers, they're leeches. They're, they're, they're going to suck you dry. They want to acquire your wealth that you've attained your whole entire lives by doing absolutely nothing. And like, say, an IRS, they print the money. They know it's debt notes. They know it doesn't really exist. They're probably taking tax money and just throwing it in a furnace someplace or throwing it out in the ocean. You know they don't give a damn. What they, you know, why they, why they control and stabilize global governments? I don't really couldn't care less. Why they try to take the wealth from the people? So you know, third world countries feel that well. Look, the United States has got so much wealth, and you know, you know that's not fair, and you should spread the wealth with the world, and you know, f that. You know, they, they're looking globally. I look locally. And it's like, look, are you another man? Yeah, I don't care if you're a centralized government. I don't care if you're a world government. I don't care if you're a universal galactical government. You're not going to take my property. I worked. I sweated. I strained for this. I dealt with the heat. I dealt with the cold. I dealt with not eating. I dealt with the fatigue. I worked through this. I labored. This is my labor. This is the fruits of my labor. Don't you dare trespass. Don't you effing dare. Well, I got a badge. I got a gun. I got a, I'm an IRS. I'm a CNA. I'm an ATO. I'm a streaming tax office. I, I, I'm somebody. Oh, really? You're an effing man. And what have you done for me? If you could show me what you've done for me, I'll be more than glad to compensate you. Show me what you've done for me. And I'll be more than glad to pay my fair share. Like, so I say, people always get upset with me because I say, yeah, you should pay property taxes. Yeah, you should pay locally. It's a local obligation. Like I said, that's a, maybe you say it's a Germanic thing, part of being German. Yes, we all had the defend our own little locale. We had to defend our own little valley. We had to worry about the marauding hordes that were going to come over the other side of the mountain. That's right. We have to pitch in and, and, and build a fort and build a wall. We have to. Somebody's got to stand guard. Somebody's got to pay for the roads. Somebody's got to pay for the schooling of our children because we're busy out there in the fields of butchering. We're, we're too busy doing what we're doing. So God bless some lady who's going to teach my children ABC. Yes, I'm going to support localities. Yes, I have no problem. And a centralized government, what was it supposed to do? Just create a standard currency so all the localities can, you know, co commerce and intercourse with each other effortlessly? A standardized, a standardized monetary system? And put a fence around the country. Put a fence around this nation. Secure our borders. Okay, put the fence around our border. I'll, I'll help you pay for that. Help with the standardized monetization of the of the fund? Lovely. I'll help you do that. Anything else? That's not your duty, obligation, and job. Now you guys are just getting silly. All I require of you is to do what you agreed. And your constitution, which constitution means contract, your contract with the people is to secure the borders and stabilize the, the monetary system. That's it. That's all I want to see. I don't want, I don't want any damn thing else from you people. 
Thank you for all of it. Oh, well, we'll get this agency to take your child, to help protect your children. We'll get this agency uh, for what? Look, I'm fine. So to protect the environment. No, that's okay. If my neighbor owns a corporation, his name is Bob, and I find him, and my neighbors find him dumping toxic waste in our cattle stream that we all our cattle depend on. Oh, Bob's going to have a hard time. And the least of his problems is uh, being federally indicted. We're going to take care of Bob. The best thing Bob can have is a federal indictment against him if he makes it to federal court. So, no, I'm not worried about, you know, oh, they protect us from Dow Chemicals. Oh, really, I'm going to find a guy who runs Dow. And uh, we're, going to have a little, we're going to have a little discussion about what he just did or what he let his subordinates do. Maybe he let his little corporation get a little too big and he can't train, discipline, and monitor them in a proper manner. That's why any kind of corporation, a Frankenstein, their charter could be revoked immediately, like Tylenol. When they put all those, with a two, three bottles of Tylenol had cyanide in it, because some clown in Rhode Island, Connecticut, thought it was funny to put it in some bottles and, and kill a couple of people in Connecticut. Every single Tylenol bottle within the United States control was destroyed immediately. Billions of dollars worth of inventory destroyed. Because they don't have a right to appeal. They don't have a right to uh, a hearing. They don't have a right to uh, an attorney. They're a corporation. They exist only to benefit man in the slightest moment, just a hair breath. You cause any harm, loss, injury, or damage to man, your charter is revoked and you are destroyed and shut down immediately to protect one single man. If it was one life that was saved by shutting down Tylenol, great. The people who invest in the Tylenol say, but wait a second, all our billions of dollars into it, we're going to lose our money. Dude, you're going to lose your money, but you're going to lose your life. Well, no. Well, then what's more sacred? Your money, your wealth that you put into Tylenol, your, your, your stocks and bonds, your interest that you accumulated throughout the years, or, or a man's life? Well, you know, uh, our actuaries said, uh, they crunched the numbers, and they said, you know, maybe only 3.8 more people might die. Really? Well, how about you take one of these bottles and you take the shot? Yeah, here's one. Why don't you swallow some of these things? Why, why, why don't you tell us if you're going to be one of the 3.87 people that are going to die? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, how about we shut it down? Yeah, well, I guess we want to shut it down. So see what I'm telling people? It's just common sense. But people are so worried about, like, you know, corporate interests, corporate profits, you know, and how, you know, you know, like I said, God bless them. They, they, I wish for them to exist. I, I, I love that Tylenol exists. But, yeah, if it's going to cause harm to the man, am I going to be the next one who's going to take one of those pills out of that bottle that that guy just died from? Well, come on, he only probably laced one pill in that bottle. Maybe he did, too. Are you willing to play Russian roulette? you want to pop one of those Tylenol pills? Um, yeah, maybe maybe better destroy that bottle. But the other ones are probably okay. Dude, how about we destroy them all just to play it safe? Um, yeah, okay, fine. So see, this is what I just try to teach people, you know, the common basic sense of what I do, what a corporation is, what a fiction is, how they can exist, how I'm trying to get John to convince the jury that, look, this is a wonderful benefit. The IRS, I love them all. You know, God bless these motherfuckers. But you know what? They're causing all the man. they got to stop. That's basically simple. And that's it. But the jury doesn't, maybe the jury thinks, well, no, the IRS Tylenol has the capacity to exist. And if they lose 3.87 people in the next year because of cyanide and Tylenol tablets, I guess that's what society's got to tolerate. Can the other side, Tylenol, convince a jury that, okay, maybe we're going to lose 3.87, but look at the millions and billions of people we're helping throughout the world with our product. Maybe they could persuade the jury because this is the term of art that all attorneys use to juries. Let's be reasonable. Bullshit. I'm black and white. There's no reasonable with me. It's either yes or no. On or off. No maybes. No let's be reasonable. That is a woman's prerogative. That's like somebody who's colorful. Somebody who could uh, who could say, you know what? We got to, we got to, let's, let, let's, let's let the kids do it this time. Well, let's let them do it just a little. No, because I let the lady see the baby. I let her see it. Next thing she wants to do is touch the baby. Next thing she wants to do is take the baby down for an exam. Next thing she wants to do is inoculate the kid. 
Next thing she wants to do is to put the kid in foster care. Next thing she's going to do is going to set some of us to appear in court and commit extortion. Say, if you don't do this, we're not going to give you back your property. She's going to commit extortion. And guess what? This crazy society in which we live in at this point in time on planet Earth believes that's kosher, believes that's cool, believes that's okay, okie dokie, it's not a problem for these crazy central life government people to do this. So no, I'm not, I'm done. Like, I'm drawing a line, I'm done. I was nice enough to let you see the child. I was nice enough to let you witness, see my property from a public vantage point, from a common ground. But you are not trespassing. I am so effing done with giving you people one inch because you take a mile. I am so effing done. I'm done being reasonable. I am effing done. But like I said, you know, it's nice to support. You've got to have some sort of like, you've got to have some sort of beliefs. You got to, and you can't be oh, like this one guy, this boom bender guy, um, Dallas guy from Texas. He was so wrapped up in acquiring everything from himself and giving absolutely nothing back to society. And uh, we used to go around and around on my early shows. You know, I thought he was a really decent guy at first, and then I just kept saying, well, dude, you've got to give something back. You know, you make $800 a day, $800 a day, and you sit on your butt and you move a crane like maybe three or four feet, you tell me. You make $800 a day, and you don't want to give money back to the local community for property taxes? What happens if a tree falls down in your road? Who do you expect to come down with a chainsaw and allow your wife and your kids to go to school or work? Well, I could hire somebody to do it. Dude, okay, you're at work. Your wife can't hear you because the crane is working. You're doing whatever. You're at work for 10 hours. The cell phone don't work, whatever. You want your wife and kids to be able to function, right? You want them to have the capacity to move in freely in and out of that home, right? Right. Okay, you can't always be there for them. What if you drop dead and die? Dude, okay, how are they going to exist? They're going to need a community to support them if you're gone. You've got to give back to the community. You've got to give back. If you if you can't afford the cash, okay, are you down at the volunteer fire department washing their trucks on the weekends? Well, no. Well, when your house catches on fire, who's gonna who paid for the fire department to put fuel in that truck to come down there? Well, property taxes. That's right. But you don't want to pay. What have nobody in the neighborhood wants? Nobody in your, in your community wants to pay to put fuel in that fire truck. The firemen are supposed to take the money out of their own pockets and fill up that truck to go save your house. And you're gonna bitch that they weren't there fast enough or on time or something like that. You're gonna sue them. What, where, where are you coming up with these crazy beliefs? How can, sick and perverted are you people? What kind of ungodly people are you? It's like, it's just like I said, you've got to give back something. And that's what people like, even when they established this country, why they thought it was ridiculous to have a, a form of taxation on the people. It's like people are goodly and godly. They know if they've got something, they're supposed to give back to their community. They're supposed to give back to their their, their neighbors, their friends. They're supposed to get back to the community because God is watching. Jesus is watching. That as far as they, they, thank God they had a fear of God watching over them. Or Jesus, was this what you want to be doing if Jesus came back today? Is is this what you want Jesus to see you doing? At least they had that little, you know, little man on the shoulder, little conscious Jimmy Cricket guy whispering in their ear, the little slave behind the chariot, keeping them honest. They had the dad whispering next to them while they're digging a hole. You guys don't have that. And I realize that. And like Gus said, he's like, yeah, because he's like, where are we going to get this from? It's like, okay, you know, like how the ancient Romans did it. Okay, how the German people do it. How uh, the Jiminy Cricket thing, you know, the guy on your shoulder, the conscious thing, the right and wrong. 